Hey everyone, Jeff McElwain here, and today I want to talk about breaking out of a rut, which is something every musician comes across at some point in your playing. Many times in your playing, you're going to hit a rut. You don't know what to practice, you don't have any desire to pick up the instrument, you're feeling kind of empty, you don't know why you're doing it, there's no excitement left. All these things happen to everyone. So I want to give you a few pointers on how to break out of a rut. Before we get going, if you like my channel, you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. It really helps out quite a bit. Really, really does. Also, if you like the track that I was playing over, you can have it for free. Click the link below, the link above, to get that track for free. Also, go over to JM Guitar Lessons. You can check out my YouTube freebies section with all these other background tracks and my courses, Mastering Major Triads and Minor Triads. You have a link below for a special sale price on those. So, let's get to it. Number one, take a lesson. Find someone who's playing inspires you and contact them about taking a lesson. I would do a live lesson, either online or uh, in person if you can do that. The reason for that is the interpersonal connection you would have with that person. They can hear you play, you can play together, they can get a good sense of where you are as a musician, what you're looking for, and a good teacher will be able to hone in on what they can give you specifically to help you get to the next level in your playing. A good teacher will listen to where you're at, where you want to be, what you're into, and what you know, and assess what would be the best thing for you to work on to get to you to where you want to be. I highly recommend that you hunt out someone who inspires you, either as a player or an instructor or anything. When I take lessons, and I still take lessons with people, is I hunt out people who have something that I don't have, whether it's some jazz vocabulary or something I want to work on. It doesn't have to be a guitar player. It can be any instrumentalist at all where I can pick their brains about certain things that I don't know how to do, or I want to know what's going on in their mind. So that is super important. And the great thing is when you pay someone for their time, uh, it's different than hanging out with your friend and asking your friend to show you something. So number one is to take a lesson. Second rut buster I would highly recommend is to go see live music. That is one of the most inspiring things for me to do. YouTube is cool to watch people play, but when you're in the room, when somebody's playing their butt off, that is the thing that gets me going. I love that. That's when I come home and I want to practice. Whether it could be competitive, right? I get it. I'm certainly competitive. I'm not competitive in, to a fault in a sense where I get angry. I love hearing great players and I'll hear somebody really great play and I'm like, oh man, I got to go home and practice and work on my thing or try to steal some of what they were doing. Everybody steals from everybody else. By the time you get it, you do through the wash and repeat, it becomes your own thing. So going to see live music is exceptionally important. Also, while you're there, listen to how those musicians interact with each other. It's also very important and very inspiring to me as well. When you're seeing a really great band firing on all cylinders, and I'm talking about maybe more like improv-based improv music, Everybody should be listening to each other. And to me, just walking out of a great musical experience, hearing great musicians playing, always inspires me to want to go home and play. It never had the adverse effect where I wanted to give up playing. Put that aside. That's all nonsense. That's all in your head. You're always going to get better. The idea is to work and practice with intent. So when you go see somebody play, look at it as like, man, those guys were great. I want to get better. So use that energy from the live gig in a positive way to spur you forward. It's a, music is something that's meant to be played live, and I think that's partly what can be kind of lost when we're in our living rooms or in our houses, a very online age we live in. Music was made to be played with other people. Or music culturally has always been performed with other people. So really, really important to be in the room when great music is being performed, and I find that inspires me to get out of a rut. Third on my list is to jam with friends, whether it's a band or you go to a friend's house and you guys play together. I would certainly try to find, if you've got any friends who play a little bit better than you, that's really where you want to go. If you find you're teaching somebody something the whole time, that's not really inspiring for you. If you have a friend who's at your level, um, or maybe plays a little different style music than you, or something like that, or someone who's just a little bit better than you, that you they push you forward, they can show you things, and you strive to be a little bit better because you see someone who's got the edge on you in certain ways. And you may have the edge on them in certain ways. And that's another really cool thing about having expanding your musical network of friends, if possible. 
I know it's not always easy if it's not your profession, but there are in musicians in your area and you should go to local music stores or things and try to seek out other people. I'm sure there's Facebook groups. Try to get together with other musicians because when you do it in a vacuum of your practice room, wherever you're playing, and I fall prey to this as well, you lose touch with a lot of the creative energy that is music, that what we're supposed to hopefully be doing is creating. And if we live in our own bubble, very often it is it stifles that creativity, at least for me, especially as a player. Being around other people, as I said, going to see live music is extremely important. So getting together with some friends, playing with a band, working on things specifically, pushing yourself forward, and jam with someone who pushes you a little bit further is a great way to go. And it's fun. Number four, this is something you can do at home, is learn some new material. Whether they're songs, I want to go back and learn some songs from my childhood that I really loved. For me, it was always about like Led Zeppelin. I go back and relearn Led Zeppelin tunes and realize I never knew them properly. I had some version of them that I learned when I was younger. And I go back and go, wow, I, I, I never played 10 Years Gone properly or something like that. For me, that's really inspiring because when you think about great musicians or great songs, they inspire me because they're great, right? If you think about any great player, great tune, songs that we remember, like in the conscious memory of music, of Western rock, for really when we talk about our blues, going back to the well of those tunes really gets me going. Do a new tune if you know how to play you know, comfortably numb for the million times, then don't do that. Go back to a different song. And then maybe push the envelope a little bit. Well, I really like that Steely Dan tune. Let me go online and see if I can find somebody to teach me how to play the chords to Peg or something. It's going to push you a little bit further. Also, just going back and learning just great tunes. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a huge David Bowie fan. And I just go back and learn a bunch of David Bowie tunes. And he's really great songwriter. Some of those really interesting chord changes, like learning to going back and learning Starman or something. There's these really great chord changes in that tune. The Beatles, there's a whole wealth of all these people. Whether it's new people, go and learn some John Mayer tunes and anybody who floats your boat, go learn some other tunes and try to think about, oh, what's going on here? What chords are they using? And let me try to steal that. Let me try to break this down in my head and really learn the tune. Don't just kind of brush through it. Be able to play along with the recording from top to bottom. That's really, really instructive because not only is it fun and it gives you something focused to work on, you're playing in time, right? You have to play along with the recording, so you're pushing your technique to the point that you can play the song all the way through. You probably have to have it memorized, or at least you want to memorize it so you can play it all the way through. And the more songs you learn, the larger your repertoire gets. That makes you a better musician. You can play with more people. You can call out tunes. But learning to play along with songs is very educational. Growing up, I always played along with records. I say records because they were records and CDs after that. Um, and I still do. I'll put on some records when I was a kid and play along with them or jazz records or something or blues records and just play along with the band because it's really inspiring and you can work against that and then you learn what it's like to play in a real life situation. Number five, Rut Buster. Listen to music that you don't normally listen to. A friend of mine had a great analogy for this. Like, growing up, maybe I didn't like sushi, and now I really do. The food didn't change, I did. So I'm willing to try to listen to things that maybe when I was younger, I didn't really care for, or some stuff that you might find something that you really, really love. So lately, I've been listening more back to uh, older jazz, which I always liked, but I going back to older, like 50s and things like that, where it's just a little bit more... I was, I'm a big fusion guy, so I'd always listen to the fusion guys, but now I'm just kind of listening to some of the earlier stuff, and I'm really enjoying it more than I did when I was younger, just for whatever. Maybe my mind is more in tune with it now or anything like that. Country music as well. I love classic outlaw country now. When I was growing up, I did not. Now I really, really love it. So there's all those kind of things that um, you can discover, and that's inspiring because there's always going to be great stuff, especially from the best in those categories. So you always go back to the best of the best. That's always the thing, whether it's the Beatles or the Stones or Zeppelin or uh, Willie Nelson and uh, or if it's classical music, you have Bach, Beethoven, all the classics that way. If it's jazz, you're talking different periods, Miles Davis or John Coltrane or Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, 
you know, any of those guys. Uh, fusion stuff, so, so like Robin Ford and John Schofield and Scott Henderson and Mike Landa, all those guys that I really love. It's a great well of information that I can always go back to and always feel inspired because it's just great, great, great stuff. Take a break. Sometimes you have to clear your head. Don't play for the day or two. I'm not saying don't play for six months. Uh, I'm because the technical thing starts to go out the window and that can be really torturous. You pick up the guitar. I'm like, I can't play anymore. That's really painful. But you know, if you're not feeling it one day, that's cool. Just put the guitar down or put the instrument down and come back to it. You know, the mental headspace is really, really important. Really important. I'll do another video coming up soon on ways, methods to practice and best times to practice and things that I do, which I can only give you, of course, as my input. But some days I just realize it just is not happening and I just put the guitar down and go outside. And tomorrow's another day, okay? So that's a cool thing to think about as well. So there's my top five list and I hope you enjoyed that. And thank you for checking out my channel. And if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. Don't forget to go over JM Guitar Lessons. You get the YouTube freebies there, the 14 free high quality background tracks, mastering major triads, mastering minor triads courses, masterclasses, all sorts of stuff. And I will see you the next time.